Hello there and welcome to another Flashmasters livestream. Today we will be speaking with the incredible Christian Cardona, an incredible photographer based in Colombia, and we're going to be chatting with him about how he created these three images. And then, in our Flashmasters member zone, we're going to be talking to him about how he created these other five. So, without further ado, let's bring him on. Welcome everyone, Christian Cardona. Yes, Christian, he's with us. <laughs> do it. <laughs> How are you guys? Very, very well. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, I understand you've had a very, very busy day, Christian. Yeah, this actually this month, because we're closing a school uh, season from, from now, we have to deliver all the yearbooks that we do at the end of the year. So we're fi finishing all the, all, the, all the photography for these books uh, from last days of July to last days of September. So it's really, really uh, uh, like a busy season for us these, these weeks. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's so good that you're here. And I know, like I said, it's a very busy time. So for those of you who have joined the stream and are expecting, obviously, Christian to show lots of for, you know, wedding photography images, as lots of our ambassadors do. Um, can you give us a little bit of information about yourself, Christian? Because I know uh, it's not just weddings that you shoot, is it? And you've you've hinted a bit towards school. So before we go into it, could you just give us a bit of an overview of your business and what it is that, that you shoot as well, please? Okay, well, I've been around for more than 25 years now, from now. Uh, I'm start doing. Uh, I'm a graphic designer, uh, so wow. I start basically with a small business doing uh, publications and books and all kind of design stuff for for schools. Uh, and so, of course, all these type of things that we have to do for schools uh, need a, a good photography for 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 it. So. I was basically forced to understand how to start doing great photos for, for these books and start studying and, and, and try to understand how to manage flashes at the beginning. Of course, I was uh, really bad <laughs> doing the, all this. So I started doing uh, all this photography for the schools, the senior portraits, group photo uh, photos, uh, sports photos, all, all these type of photos that a school needs for, for these publications. And uh, it was just a matter of time when a few girls from, that was on a graduation uh, uh, go and find me and told me, oh, you do my, my senior portraits. I will love you to do my, my wedding photos. So at that point on my career, it was more than 15 years ago, uh, for me, wedding photography was like the worst thing on, on earth. Like, I don't know how <laughs> these guys live uh, or, do, or make a living of doing photos for a wedding. Uh, that was the type of photos that I really like to do. I started doing some uh, a lot of photos for for these kids on 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 the schools, and then started calling me, and that's it. Fifteen year, fifteen years later, I start doing weddings as a as a regular thing, as as you see right now. But the the good point about start doing weddings is that I was forced to do. Uh, understand how to how to manage flashes and lights and how to develop a, 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 a really good a photo uh, understand how how you construct a, a photo so uh, basically weddings make me a, a good photographer because a lot of years I was a, I was really a bad bad photographer oh I don't believe that <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I will never show the first years of my of my career. That was like I, I just I was the type of guy that go to a, to a shop, a photography shop, and give me the best camera you have for photos. That's it, and I put everything on automatic and praise that everything works. And sometimes do it, I, I do it, and sometimes not. <laughs> yeah we all definitely started from somewhere and you're someone who's definitely you know obviously come from very humble and sort of simple sort of setups with regards to photography to where you are now and and someone who clearly has a lot of skill set uh, so before we go any further as well welcome to everyone who is watching us and joining us on youtube as part of the Flash i'm sorry Masters helen YouTube i'm losing channel. you from oh sometimes i lose the 
the connection and everything, everything freeze. So I, I, I don't hear your question. Oh, I was just doing an introduction for the for the YouTube video, so you haven't missed anything yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, Some, uh, sometimes it's, 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 everything freeze, so I don't know what's happening. So I'm trying just to keep keep smiling because <laughs> I don't know what is happening. <laughs> there was a moment where you were a little slow for me as well, so I just thought just keep smiling, and then you came back. <laughs> So I'm sure this will only make for a more entertaining stream. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just to let you know what I was saying was welcoming everyone who is joining us on our YouTube channel, on the Flashmasters YouTube channel. Christian is one of our incredible ambassadors. Um, and what I forgot to read out as well, because I always make these notes and then go straight in and forget, <laughs> is uh, for those who don't know, Christian is based in Colombia. Uh, and I found this on your Flashmasters profile that you have obviously more than 20 years experience. You're an educator, a brand ambassador for Magmod, Geekoto, Cloudspot, Aftershoot, and of course, Flashmasters. Over 500 weddings under your belt. And then the next one that absolutely blows my mind, over 25,000 senior portraits delivered. <laughs> And yep. over 2,000 yearbook titles edited and printed. I, I don't know how you find the time for this. And on top of all of that, <laughs> you've done 80 plus workshops in uh, America and Europe, more than 30 conferences as a speaker. And year after year, you come in the top photographers of the world with my wed as well, which is absolutely phenomenal um, and out of this world. <laughs> And at Makes the same so time, a very humble, uh, yeah, a very humble and very kind, hardworking person. And uh, I did say to Christian just before we started, um, one of Christian's, or some of Christian's friends, Jesse and Moira Laplante, who you've run workshops with, um, Jesse and Moira yeah. said to me uh, on, on a call that we will never ever, or I would never meet someone who worked as hard as you and that you absolutely <laughs> run rings around them and make them feel very lazy. <laughs> yeah, these guys make fun of that all, all the time that they see me like, you're always working. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do with, with your life? You work all the time. But and some guys actually uh, make fun of me here because they say that I have a clone. But no, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> it's very interesting to know, though, that you're able to do all of this. Before we sort of go into even looking at your images, which are obviously phenomenal, um, I will say at this time of year, and I know that lots of us who over the last few years after COVID have been, you know, a little bit busier than what we were beforehand. So many photographers complaining about burnout, sort of kind of losing the passion for it or feeling overwhelmed. Uh, do you have any tips or how do you not go, I'm done with this, I've had enough, <laughs> I'm going to slow down. How do you stay inspired and passionate about it? You know, I think everyone have that moment in their careers when they they really start to think about if this is gonna last for every for every for for all the time. If yeah. you're not gonna get uh, tired of doing your your photography or or doing what you do uh, for a living, uh, I think everyone in a moment of their careers and especially at that times on the, on the on the pandemic. Everyone was like concerned about what what we're gonna do and what is gonna happen with all this, but well, I'm kind of lucky uh, with in that point because I work all my time doing weddings and I do it and doing also school. So uh, when when the when the COVID comes, I remember well, everything stopped, especially on weddings and and, and events. So uh, I was as I suppose most of of, of our colleagues. They were super stressed about what we we're going to do. But mm -hmm. I, I, as I told you, I think we're kind of lucky. Uh, because so we, we keep doing the photos for the schools. Of course, we have to do a lot of things uh, concerning about the COVID. And you know that you have to walk to a school dressing like an astronaut. And, you know, we, we will have to do a lot of things. But that wow. keeps us working. And... and the good thing about COVID on that time is that I recover a lot of time that I that I lose a lot with weddings with my family. So yeah. I was forced to be at home 
I actually closed my office uh, that I have with, with my group of, of, of designers and, and photographers. And we all now working from home is one of the best things that ever happens to us because I can spend more time with my kids. I have more time for me uh, that basically I get from moving all around from the city to go to, to my office. So that's kind of a lot of things that keep me like, okay, this is sometimes that, that, that changes make you do that things that you were delaying a lot. So yeah, uh, I'm just trying to, 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 to understand how lucky we are that we, we still having a, a, a work that we have a lot of clients that, that, that the world can stop, but basically you have to keep moving because that's how things work. But I was actually yeah. very, very happy that I, I spent more time with my family that day. So it was like kind of a, a hard, a hard time for a lot of people I know, but actually for me, it's, I, I, it was like a, a real, real family and good time for, for me on that days. And for keeping myself inspired, basically what I'm trying to do is like, uh, enjoy every day like trying to like uh, i have and again I, i'm very lucky to to go all the days to school so i use the schools as a as a lab i i try to go and try new techniques and try to do the things that i will not be able to do on a wedding so i i, I like to try to play a little bit with my, my my cameras of course there's some days that are very hard and you're very tired but some days i just try to go and, and take that risk that i will not able to take on on a wedding day I was going to ask, I had this down as one of my questions that I was going to ask somewhere else or another point in the in the interview, but it feels quite good to ask now. I was going to ask, is there a particular type of shoot that for you is your favourite or that you think enhances the way that you shoot in terms of your creativity? Um, because as, as mentioned, on wedding days, it's so quick, it's so fast paced. We don't often in the in the midst of it and the the rush and the pressure have much time to be creative so do you find that your other types of shoots give you that opportunity to to test yourself creatively i basically when i start doing weddings i was kind of find that there was the same the same way as i work all days mm -hmm. normally what i have to do is that i have to go to a school and do tw today for example we do 35 kids uh and that's the rush that i have to manage all day like next one next one next one next one and if you go to a wedding basically it's the same thing it's like you're a fire a firefighter that you have to go and uh go in and 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 stop all that each each and every five minutes of of, of the day so when when i go to a wedding it's basically the same thing so uh i used to to work that way when i am in school so when i go to 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 the weddings i basically feel the same the same way so I'm I when I start doing weddings I don't feel weird doing weddings like I actually feel like very comfortable but uh, also I I see that I can do the photos that I want not the photos that I'm asked to do so it's yeah. it, that's a bit the big the big difference so that's why I like and love to do weddings because I can go and do what mm -hmm. I think is is right and not only the thing that the that the client is telling me I want to do this photo you know sometimes yeah. the kids come and show me a photo that they found on, on Instagram, the one that is on on, on trend, trending right now. So they show me a photo and ah, I love this photo, but oh, okay, again, that photo. Or uh, So you have to do or try to, to, to make that feel good with the result. But normally, not all the time is the, the, one, the photo that you would like to do. Yeah. Interesting. So there's going to be so many questions as we come through. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for those who are once again watching, we're going. We have a total of eight uh, images from Christian that we're going to ask about how he produced, how he lit and created, and lots of questions along the way. The first three are going to be free for everyone to watch here on the YouTube channel, and then the final five images will be available to watch in the Flashmasters member zone of the website. So I've got one more geeky question to ask before we go into the images, if that's okay, Christian. And I know that, okay. you know, we all love kit. We all love gear. We all love to have the new lenses and the greatest lights um, and everything to make our images, you know, really pop or to make our job easier. 
Uh, for those who don't know, what sort of what do you shoot with? Which camera system? Which lenses? And everybody also wants to know what lights you're using and modifiers. So, what would you usually take to a job or to a typical wedding day, for example? Okay, I I will break that question on two parts because yes. uh, it's not the same thing when I go to a school that when yeah. I go to a wedding. Um, actually, I talk about a lot on that on my workshops because you basically have to plan all your gear based based not on what is good for doing a a, 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 a photo, but what you really need to solve problems depending yes. on on the on the on the requirements of the day. So if you know that you have a wedding on the beach and you will have a lot of sun, well, the gear will be basically uh, uh, flashes that have more power than may, maybe a speed light. Uh, if you have to, you, you have a wedding all uh, that is all uh, at night, well, you basically can go with uh, uh, less gear with the not so heavy and power and powerful gear. So I will basically make my my equipment based on that. If I know that I have to work on a small space, I will not get. I, I will not bring an eighty-five or a seventy-two hundred because I know that I will not be able to use it. If I'm yeah. gonna be on a big space or a big room, well, maybe I can go and use uh, longer, longer lenses. So I, I, I try not to, to, to say, okay, this is the perfect gear for doing something, but more than okay, what, what, what I have to do to solve on that day of the wedding so i i basically bring my the gear based on what i'm gonna do on that day but on the schools it's very driven because i never know what is going to happen i may be at 7 a.m with a lot of sun in the middle of a soccer field and then i will be on the lap of the school doing a photo on a do super dark spot with no space for, to do the photo and then i will have to go to the theater of the school and then i have to go to uh, the parking lot where some kids bring their cars i, I don't know wow. each photo is going to be different so i will maybe need a lot of power a big a big flash or maybe no this is <laughs> this is very funny because each time it's, it's freeze i i have the worst the worst face I could possibly have. <laughs> I'm trying to have a good face each time I, I talk. <laughs> that, that was so interesting. And for me, for someone from the UK, I think in terms of our school portraits, it's completely different. And those who take your school portraits in the UK, they literally will do everyone. You just sit on a chair, smile, and they're like, next, next where there's no kind of creativity whatsoever in the UK system. So it's really interesting to hear as well. Yeah, it's, uh, actually, this is this is kind of uh, something that I, I start doing by luck, not by copying some type of style. When I start doing the portrait, I remember that the, one of the first books that I start doing, uh, the kids want to do uh, something more like a fashion magazine, more than a yearbook. So that's why wow. I, I start trying to do portraits the way uh, uh, a fashion photographers do a photo. So that's why I start doing the photos that way, not not because I was trying to be different or trying to do something. I just was trying to please my first clients the way they want. But I like the way I do it. So I start I, I keep doing that the, the 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 portrait that way, and from some reason the people start seeing okay this this these portraits are, are different. Uh, a few a few years later, I start seeing some yearbooks from the states, and I see that they were also very classic. But there is a, a few photographers that start doing like more, uh, uh, you know, like that. You know what is the quinceañeras on Mexico? Yes. Okay, like that 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 uh, girls that do that teens uh, sessions. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the states, some guys start doing something like that. Uh, based for, on the on the on the way that the seniors start doing their photos and start doing also a movement of trying to do a more creative thing but when i started doing this was 20 20 years ago and no one was doing at least in my country that because that was as you as you said a very classic and very formal type of portraits that we're still doing that but also yeah. we try to incorporate these to our publication so we have like a mix of of everything because also the parents love their formal portraits and the schools want their, you know, that uh, that that type of photos with the uh, go. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of that in English. Uh, Golden Gones. I remember the the ah, what's the name of that? Graduation hats. Uh, no. The graduation hat. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it feels like another world, seriously. Nothing like this happens in the UK. There's no such thing as like senior portraits or like I said, yeah, and I really should or I'll try to find some of my old school <laughs> photos. <laughs> I'm going to cringe, but I should post well, what we have a, in the UK. That's a, a good business opportunity there. Honestly, it's, it, considering most things that happen in the US eventually come over to the UK, but that's one thing that really hasn't yet. So, yeah, maybe I need to be ahead of the trend there, but we really don't have anything like that whatsoever in the UK. So it's just interesting to hear the amount of effort and time and to create sort of individual portraits that suit you know, suit the students and, and the individuals instead of literally lining up one after the other. And I've seen this because I used to be a high school teacher myself as well. So yeah, school photo right. day was literally one day and they would have hundreds of children and they'd just sit in a stool, smile, yeah, next, with a background, and that was it. With a background, <laughs> sitting on a, on a chair and that look was it. straight to the camera. There we go, next. And <laughs> that's that's it. Oh, but it's great to hear that they obviously you're you're making you know well a fantastic business from from something that's much more creative and personalised. Okay, <laughs> um, right. I think we're going to start having a look through some of these images. Um, and like I said, okay. the first three they're going to be live on YouTube, and the rest we will keep to our Flash Masters community. So this is where I usually mess up. And I show the wrong image. <laughs> so we'll see how things go. So any second now. No. No, that's the wrong one. There you go. I knew I'd mess up. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, yes, Christian, um, if you could talk us through a little bit about this image. Um, I absolutely adore it. And I think my first question would be, how many lights have you used on this setup? Uh, this one base, this was actually three lights. Looks like it was four, but actually it was three. Uh, this is on Cartagena. Uh, this is a really famous spot where we go normally to do the, the session after the ceremony. Uh, it's called Las Bovedas. It's a, it's a place like a very colonial old city on the north part of Colombia. It's really nice. And the walls and, the, and, and all the city is full of that walls, full of color. So it's really nice to to find uh, that that spaces with all that textures and all that because it's, it's very easy to find places like this in Cartagena. Every every corner you find a place like this. But the thing here is what this was like 6 p.m. It was getting kind of of dark, but there was a nice spot of light that you see the the, the back of them. That that thing that you see uh, that is kind of arc that you see behind them is actually yeah. sunlight going through a tree and a small wall that is at the side. Uh, I just used the blue gel, the other the other flash on the right on the right side of the of the photo uh, naked with without any type of modifier and a small soft fox over them. So it looks like there's three lights but uh, four lights but it actually three lights. That is so interesting. I know that both Neil and I were looking at this image before we started and I was just wondering that light behind them, how it's so, sort of so strong and how it was shaped. I was thinking, is he pointing the is he pointing the light up? I was totally confused. So that was actually available light that, that was already there. Yeah, like a big, big uh, ray of light that was looking like an arc from, from my yeah. side. If you if you see it from the front, actually, it's just like a line, but the walls the wall make make as you see the wall is like kind of uh, like in a diagonal way, so yeah. that diagonal make that the, like sensation that you're looking like an arc. So if you if you see it from the side, that what's happened that you see that, but it's actually not four lights; it's three lights. Well, that makes perfect sense now because I was yeah we were proper scratching our heads and I was like, I don't know, is it almost like if you put something on there to make it like narrower, not a grid and then point it up. And yeah, I was honestly like, I don't know how he did that, but uh, yeah, you were very clever and it was just natural light and you've, you've added around it. <laughs> Absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. So I will say as well, and I know we'll talk about this quite a lot, but your use of gels is absolutely incredible. Uh, um, I'm someone who rarely uses them myself or I, I just don't really have time to get them out of the bag but this yeah it really adds you know something to it and what I imagine is otherwise uh, not a very exciting location 
Yeah, but uh, normally, I, normally I use like uh, th these gels f just for trying to get attention to the to the subject. One of the things that I told to my students is that uh, in the middle of the rush of a, of a wedding day or in a school, you normally, if, if you have your your head like thinking on twenty things at the same time, it's it's very common to make mistakes. Like just put a color just to fill a space without any purpose. But normally, what I try to do is to 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 get more attention uh, to to the to the couple or to the subject or to the intention that the photo have, not just simply decorate the photo. So uh, that's that's the way I try to understand it and try to to make a combination of colors like a warm and and cool colors or something that some way get your attention to them. So that's why I normally use that the the, the gels for just for that. Not not just for decoration. It's more for getting attention to the to the to the idea that I want to bring on the on the on the photo amazing um and I know that uh, I'm sure many members will be able to sort of have a good guess on this themselves but when you're using gels on the wall there uh, is there any other modifiers on your flashes or are we literally just throwing a gel in front and, and just pointing it at the wall the only modifiers that I have here is one yell the blue one on the yeah. wall of the right on the left and a small soft box over the couple. That's it. The rest is another flash that is naked, uh, uh, pointing uh, uh, from the from the floor to the to the to the ceiling. So I have that light on the on the right corner. Absolutely stunning. And then regards to sort of taking out that soft box, or where did you have an assistant holding it? Sort of where was it yeah. placed within the scene? Yeah, I always use a, an assistant. Uh, my first weddings, I always go alone. Uh, but I started understanding that I, I was losing a lot of time, uh, you know, thinking about the gear and when I put something and my back in my back and the flash and whatever. So I started bringing someone that helped me just, uh, for grabbing the light, but also to keep me organized with all, all, all the gear. So I'm not losing gels or flashes or lenses that I uh -huh. left anywhere because I'm, I'm more concerned about taking the photo and, and keep moving, taking the photo and keep moving. So I'm, I'm just not trying to, to like telling a story, you know, most, you, you heard a lot of that on, on the wedding community that I'm, I'm, I, I want to go and tell a story with my photos. No, I'm just trying to take one photo at a time and then thinking about the next one, not trying to, uh, making all, all, all the, all the things, uh, connect because sometimes it's not, 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 not possible or you are, spoiling that time of doing a great photo just to figure in on the next one yes yes i'm someone who loses a lot of gear <laughs> much to neil's annoyance or i get to the end of the day and i'm like i don't know where this lens is where's my flash and especially in the, if we're just working in one venue i leave stuff all over the place so yeah i could really do with an assistant just to walk behind me <laughs> and pick up exactly. everything That's that i put I... down <laughs> Yeah, that's but and also because assistant helps you to see the things that you are not worrying at that moment. You know, yeah. Uh, maybe you are doing this photo, and behind you is the is the mother and the father of the bride crying, and you are losing that just because you are trying to do a nice photo. So you try just to to change the. You can change one second and do another for just she's telling you or he's telling you. Uh, okay, be, be aware of that or check that or whatever. So it's, it's more for, for helping on, on that two type of things. Amazing. Um, and just to make sure, I will ask, like I said, lots of questions and I try to cover anything that I think might be asked and people aren't don't want to ask or are too shy to. Um, roughly, <laughs> what would you say, uh, as a guess, would have been your flash power on this image for the, the, um, for the light on the couple? Um, I will say, I, well, this is actually, uh, I take this photo like five years ago, but I will think this will be like a eighth of a power. I normally no, don't, don't go further than that. I normally, uh, I work on, on conditions like that, that I don't have so many natural light or ambient light. I will always work from uh, 16 to eight of a power on all my, on my flashes. And from that point, I start fixing the power but more concerned about the technical spec aspect is more like you know like it's more like a i will not i don't know if this is the wrong, the, wrong, the right way of saying but um uh, it's more like a visceral thing you know like you 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 see on, on your screen what you're feeling and you're seeing and so 
okay, I think that's the amount of light that I want, not, oh, I have to go on a fourth, so I have to put the double of power on the back. And I don't think that way. I'm just trying yeah. to what I'm seeing on the on the on the on the screen and try to do it as fast as I can. This that's type of one of the things that I also uh, teach to my students, like be more concerned about creating the photo more than the technical stuff that, and aspects that normally take you too many time. And normally you don't have time for this. This photo, I basically shoot three or four times and OK, next, because we have to keep moving. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm just going to have a scroll through just to see if we've got any further questions. Although, to be fair, I'm pretty sure everything that I've seen coming through is just everybody giving love. <laughs> Everybody's loving the warm <laughs> and the cool tones and the use of gels. Um, I think at the moment everyone is just <laughs> bowing down. <laughs> or, as Matthew has just said, I think we're all just in shock. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's have a little look then at the next image. And this one, as soon as you sent it over, and I know it's on the Flashmasters website, and we were like, oh, we get to share this image. Um, just wow. Like visually, the colours, everything just absolutely hits you. Um, where was this actually taken? Actually, it's uh, very close from the other, say, other side of the, uh, the last photo. This is also in Cartagena. Uh, this is a wine, um, uh, what, what's the word for that? Uh, uh, Boveda, what would be the name of that? Um, mm, well, it's a room where they, they, they put all the wines in, like in the like a wine basement. Of, uh, of... There you go. Wine cellar, <laughs> yes. That way. So uh, that was a really small place like in the basement of uh old old houses houses that have like 500 years like i don't know it's really old houses are really nice but as you see the the roof was like in a, that circular uh, way and i remember a photo of, like 10 years ago i follow a photographer maybe you know this guy this is a really really magician it's called juan Iwan from mexico and this guy, the first time I see the work from Juan, I was shocked. I was like, okay, I want to do the things and the stuff that this guy, this guy do. And one of the photos I always remember of this guy was a, a, a photo very similar to this one, but without using flat, uh, gels. He only used like the same, the same way of a room that he find and it looks like a circle all around the couple. So yeah. when I see that photo, I always ask to myself how he do that photo. I always, I always, I always was concerned about. I always want to do a photo like that, but I was not searching for this photo. I just go to that place and I found the space and I say, okay, this is this is the time that I have to do it. So um, normally, uh, this was actually on 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 the middle of the pandemic. It was at a very personal and small uh, wedding, so I have a lot of time to work with the couple. Um, so we go inside and we start doing all a lot of photos without gels. Uh, yeah. then, um, I, I, I was trying to do the reflection with, a with a phone in front of my, of my, of my lens. Uh, but the lens was a 1635, so it was very wide. So the cell, you see all the cell phone in front of the, of the, of the image. So it yeah. was not working. So I was trying to figure out how to do it. So I go upstairs again and I found, I remember that a kid that was on the, on the, on the party half an iPad. So I go and ask him if I can use it one second. So I put an iPad in front of the, of the, the, of the, of the lens. So I, I don't see the edges of the <laughs> iPad and we add the, the flash. So we take basically two photos, the one with the flash and, we, and the one without the flash. So we can mix or yeah. uh, mix it uh, after we, we blend the, the, the layers after, so we can take out the flash. This is brilliant. So you literally stole a child, oh, borrowed a child's iPad to create the image. Borrow, borrow. I, 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 I give it again to this kid. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So are you suggesting, yeah, let me go back. So we've got obviously the light that's on the couple. Obviously you've got the orange and the reds and then you've got sort of like a hint of yellow behind as well. Are you saying this was only just the one light on the couple? There was two flashes actually. The one that is behind them that is pointing to them and is actually you see a, like a rim light uh, behind them yeah. so that basically that flash fill all the room because that was so small that 
when you put all the flash, it, basically everything everything was red. Uh, so I, I take that red with all the other flash over them. So I, I basically take that two photos for, for uh, accomplish that. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely stunning. So the light behind them that you've used for rim, was there a CTO or a certain color gel on there as well? What, what... It, was, it was an orange, it was an orange, um, uh, orange uh, gel. But remember, this these old buildings have a lot of texture, so it grab a, lo a lot of the color. So start looking like red, but actually it's, it's, it's orange. It's orange. Fantastic. And then uh, just guessing again, would this have been then with the softbox lighting the couple as well? Yeah, but as I told you, I, I have to stay very, yeah. very, very uh, still. So I, I have the same the same angle in the two photos. I put the, the the iPad in front of the lens. So I take one photo and then I, I ask my assistant to get out. So I have two photos with red, just one with the flash over them and other without. So I without. mix them then and I have the result. Brilliant. Um, yeah, those who listen to uh, many of these live streams will know and probably laugh at the fact that I always, always forget to take the photo with the person holding the light out of, out of shot and therefore i'm very very appreciative of generative phil uh, because neil always tells me off yeah. it's like helen take the light out just stay still but um i don't know my excitable brain goes i got it and then yeah, I i'll always move forget or i'll that forget too. <laughs> i i think that i lose at least 10 years of my life editing and removing flashes from my photo now with the, the new tools, I, I basically don't even don't even ask my my assistant to remove anything because I know that I will I, I will be able to fix it later. Amazing! I just literally wanted to be very childish and do that to Neil because <laughs> he's always like Helen. Just tell them to move and take another photo, and I always <laughs> always forget. So I'm glad again that it's not just me who does that. Um, so yeah, we do yeah. have <laughs> a question from Michelle Huntington. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see it on the screen or not, but she asks, how do you approach a scene? What are you looking for in a space to use to your advantage? And she said, I think you talked about it in the creative lighting camp, but I'd love to hear it again. Yeah, basically my approach is always on composition. If, if, you, have, if you don't have light, you can build it with flashes. So I'm not concerned about the light. I'm more concerned about creating a, a frame first and where I'm going to put the, the subject. And then I start thinking about light. If I have ambient light, I will use it. If I don't have ambient light, well, I will use flashes. But normally, a lot of people think that my first, I, my first approach is to turn on a, a flash. And actually, it's the last idea that I have to put a flash or a gel. Yeah, I, I try always first to use the, the ambient light that, I, that is available. If there are any light from the DJ, from the space that I am working on, I try to use it first because normally people want to remember the place. How is it? And not the way you yeah. you imagine it in another way. It's just this is just uh, the result of a lot of photos that we that we do. Uh, I, of course, I love to put colors on my photos, but most of the photos that actually they use is is without the gel it's the same photo but without the gel so you see more the color the real colors of the yeah. of the structure and not the red one is like a bonus more for me than from the couple amazing um yeah thank you so so much for that um and then i'm not sure who's asked this question i'm sure neil will shout a name in the moment um but yeah someone was asking the images the paintings and the drawings on the side wall looks the same on both sides so the person's asked did you copy and paste or have you cloned from one side to the other no, or was that exactly, just how they were they're, they're, they're exactly exactly the same the same it's, it, you see the place is exactly like it's like a it's like a mirror you see it from the from the bo the both of of the of the place is basically the same the same thing it's like a i don't know how to how to explain it it's like a like a small tunnel that have like a like a reflection from one side to another so yeah. what i do basically is to to duplicate that uh, with the with the ipad but the walls are basically the same from the one side to another so they have, they have like the basically the same de design 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to scroll back through as well. There was loads of comments through this one. Although I think once again, well, Neil was wondering or was, wasn't was shocked that I knew the name of a wine cellar because I'm someone who loves to drink wine. <laughs> um, let's have a look. I think Ellie as well also says it's very relatable in terms of forgetting to take another image without your assistant with the flash. Michelle Huntington says she does exactly the same thing as well. Um, and then Neil uh, declares that it drives him insane. <laughs> but like <laughs> as we've said, generative film now is just a life changer and, and saving so many hours of having to meticulously sort of clone or copy and paste and, and remove lights now. It's so much easier. But yeah, Neil is someone who is very much remembers to do it methodically whereas I'm just a bit more of a scatterbrain, as we say, and I take the image, get very excited, and then totally forget to take a plate one. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that one. Okay, we're going to have a little look now at our third image. Ah, oh, just the colours. Um, actually, before we go into this image, um, do you do all of your editing yourself, Christian, or is, do you have a team that sort of help? Well, I... Uh... Uh, it's a mix of a lot of things. Um, a few years ago, I do all my editing, but of course, the uh, the amount of work that normally come each day to to our office don't make me capable of of editing everything. So I start training my my designers to to edit, and they basically editing better than me a long time ago. Uh, they're really good. So they're helping me, yeah. like I, I always do the calling and the selection of the photos, uh, and then I, I pass the catalog to them with some suggestion, suggestions about the color, but I always pick the, the, the ones that I really love and, and I work on them. Uh, just like, you know, you have the, like your favorite photos, so I love to edit that photos that are my just my favorites, but yeah. the rest of the photos are normally edited by my team. But now we're working a lot with after after shoot from one year from yes. now, and basically they are saving years of work to us uh, because we already trained the, the app to to help us uh, advance a lot in the basic editing process. Uh, so we're we're saving too much time now with this software. So that's helping me a lot. So that's why I'm now working like in that two aspect. Like now we're taking the catalog and just fixing details, removing flashes. Like the small details, but not working on so much on the on the on the color because all the app works very well doing that. Yeah, I think um, you know, in terms of my point of view, I absolutely adore your use of color. But it's it's just incredible how you're able to get such punch and vibrancy in your images, and yet they're so clean. The skin tones are so clean. Um, yeah, th there's not many photographers who, yeah, who really get that balance right of keeping the skin tones natural and clean and just perfectly crisp. And then the rest of the image is like wow. So I'm like, yeah, how do you do <laughs> <Thank> it? You. <laughs> Well, this is this is a kind of uh, process that I I just don't invent it, but I mix like a two type of process that I learned from two different uh, photographers, uh, basically three photographers. One was the Christmas uh, from Christmas yeah. Studio. I met them like twelve years ago, and I, that was the first time that I I, I always loved the, the work of these guys uh, and Mauricio Arias and all their team. So the first time that I really start understanding how to develop my photos was with them. I really learned a lot with them. Uh, but uh, I see that the process was a little complex and a little bit long for, for the amount of photos that I have to deliver. Then I know of uh, a Malaysian photographer called Keda Seta. Uh, yeah. And, and he ha he's a real genius on Photoshop and editing and processing uh, their images. So I learned a lot about their process. And and for the other part of the process, I learned from Luis Ponce, he's a, um, uh, a photographer from, from Colombia that is really good on, on um, landscapes. And he learned a process from Jose Maria Millado, he's a Spanish photographer that have a real, real good uh, process of how to edit the photos on um, that way. So I really, actually, what I do is a mix of the free process of the hand and do my own recipe. 
So that's the way I do it. Like taking the, all the things I learned from the, the, the three guys and mix, mix it in my own way to do it. Amazing. Yeah, I'm still just, oh, how do we get that? We just need to bottle. <laughs> We'd like to <laughs> bottle it, please. You, is there any way that do you sell presets or is there, how do we get hold of or is there anything you offer that we could uh, have? so that we could be more Christian with our edits. Is there anything you have in the pipeline or <laughs> no, things that we could see? I, I don't have my presets anywhere. Actually, it's not the process that I that I teach on my workshop is basically more simple than it looks. Uh, every, every, everyone told me like this looked like a very complex process and actually it's super simple. Uh, but I basically work first on the way you shoot and you have the, the photo on, like a 90 percent on camera. And then yeah. uh, you add the last the last things on on edit, on the editing process. Uh, that's why I don't have actually a, a, a preset. I have my preset, of course, but that, the way I, I develop my photos. But it's just the the small a small part that is not gonna fix your photo and, and give their final result. It's like a, a a process that I that I do, and I also use a lot of Photoshop for for punching a little bit more the colors and. It's like a, as I told you, so like a lot of mix of things to, to deliver a photo like that, like that way. But you can achieve it really, really, really easy just in, on camera. Amazing, yeah. I'm still. I need. I need. Actually, I'm going to go off on a little tangent in a moment, but I need to come to one of your workshops. And um, <laughs> there's another of our Flash Masters members, Jeff Tisman, who I believe's been on your workshop as well. I said so many people have spoken about you, and Jeff. I remember having a conversation, not on stream, just off stream, going, like, I went to his workshop. I held his light, and he's still like, I still don't know how he does it. Like, he's just the way that you see the world is so unique um but yeah i definitely need to to sit down and, and see you shooting in real life and, and really see this live um so before we go on to this the third image although we've teased it um how can people sort of access or or learn more from you do you have anything in the pipeline christian where we can come and learn from your your greatness no, actually, I don't have online anything. I I'm just missed a lot of things. I know that I have to be more aware of that, but normally I, I don't. I, if you if you want to teach something, you have. I, 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 at least I believe that you. If you want to teach something, you have to do it real good and in and, and a real good way. And I don't have the time right now to spend to do like a real nice online thing. Uh, sadly, but <laughs> on this time I don't have anything online. But I do as much workshops as, as I can do. I really love to teach and I really love to do the workshops and, and going to new cities and places and meeting new people and colleagues all around the world. Uh, I really enjoy doing that classes. So I try to do as much as possible the, 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 the workshops on on, um, on, on, the, on, on on the field and not, not yeah. just going to do it on, uh, on the screen. Actually on, 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 on the COVID uh, season, <laughs> Uh, I was trying to do some 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 online workshops, but it's not the same thing. It's like, like I don't I don't believe so much on the on the online stuff because you have to go and do this exercise and, and things to to understand how the process works. Yeah. So if people wanted to come and see you in person, uh, where would be the best place to find out a little bit more about sort of your in person workshops? Uh, Instagram. I basically post everything on Instagram, and I, as I told you a few minutes ago, I, I'm working on my workshop, uh, my website, to have yeah. more information there, and to people can uh, can uh, get the the, um, the access to the workshop more easily. Uh, I know I'm like a old fashioned in this in this way in these aspects, <laughs> but I have to work more in, in my communications and all my websites and all that, so so I I can give more information to everyone. Excellent. So yes, uh, we do have Christian's handle for Instagram there in the top right hand corner as well. So this is Christian's Instagram. If you're not following him, him already, like where have you been? <laughs> give that page a like, give it a follow. And as we know, Christian does a lot of education, a lot of workshops as well. Um, and yeah, do get in touch and uh, see where he is up next and, and delivering workshops too. Um, and then what we've also said offline as well is that 
that um, we'll also start to send out via the Flashmasters mailing list any new workshops that sort of arise in the future. Um, so yeah, we will still continue to, to help get the news out there so Flashmasters members don't miss out. Okay, so... <laughs> I, I took you off on a different tangent there, but I wanted to make sure we covered that before we went uh, off YouTube. So let's go to this last image that we're going to do for the YouTube channel. Um, and I know, like I said, there's been a lot of questions on this and people wondering just what on earth is, is happening. Um, so yeah, if we go back, I'm going to think now, um, everybody's just a little bit confused. Someone's adding, are they inside a balloon? Neil's very, yeah. very confused. He says it hurts his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, someone is uh, right. They, they put it. They, they normally when they are gonna rise a balloon, they put it on the floor and they start putting a lot of air inside, so you can go inside the balloon and take the photo. So this is just two two flashes: one uh, on the back on the on the balloon outside the balloon, and the other one over them. It's just two flashes, but the one that is behind them is with my assistant, very very far away. He go and put the flash uh, in a stand and point it through the through the front of the balloon, and we go inside. We have to get out of uh, take out our shoes because we can spoil the balloon. We go yeah. inside and take the photo inside the balloon when we're there. They're feeling uh, it with with air, so it was like a unique uh, opportunity to go and do it. And we do a lot of actually a lot of photos, but that was the the one that I like more absolutely incredible so i'm not sure who it was that guessed this correctly um i know neil's still in the room so he'll probably shout a name out shortly so yes so the one one guess was balloon half filmed with air they're inside the balloon and then just one flash on them and balloon lit from outside maybe so it sounds like that facebook user has got it spot on two lights yep. one he outside it. he got it perfectly Perfect. It was Nigel Heppelwhite. Nigel, well done. You absolutely nailed it there. <laughs> and yeah, I do. It was, it was not so complex, but it was. We were. We were actually very lucky. Yeah. I was most, uh, more concerned about uh, grab, grabbing them inside all the all the like the figures that the balloon uh, gave, like all that lines uh, pointing to them. So that was I, that was my goal, like trying to put everything in, just pointing to them. Yeah, you did really well uh, within that. And I will remember, uh, there was someone in the Facebook group who couldn't, I don't think was able to make the stream. And they were saying how they would also love to have this opportunity in terms of shooting inside a balloon. And they did ask, did you have to ask for any special permissions before? Or was how did you approach trying to get this photograph with the balloon owner? Did you have we, to? We were taking the photo talk? outside first uh outside the balloon but then we see that they they were some guys you, as you see there's like a, some ropes inside that you can see uh yes. they, they, there are some guys pulling that ropes inside the balloon so when i see that guys inside i ask one of the guys if we can go inside and of course if you if you are with a bride you will always get access to anything so <laughs> she go and ask oh can i go inside and she do you know that that face like oh can i go inside and that's it <laughs> we go inside <laughs> that was that's all the work that we have to do amazing yeah like i said the symmetry on this one it's absolutely stunning as well um yeah really really impressive um and then yeah nigel who guessed it right probably the first time i've guessed right on what was the lighting question well nigel you did really <laughs> really well and like i said because we like to make sure we were covering sort of like all the technical details as well um in terms of obviously for this light to come through the fabric and um, were you using sort of a really high powered light was it a speed light um because i'd yeah, imagine it I would take quite ways. a lot on weddings, 99% of the time I have a speed lights. I don't use bigger lights because most of my weddings start at 3, 4 p.m. So, and wow. you're going to be inside of a room when they are getting ready. At uh, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Will, will be the ceremony. When you get out, normally is night. So I, I really don't need more power. So with the speed lights, I basically do everything. When I have er, er, earlier weddings, like uh, 3 p.m. or 1 p.m., I have to be on the church. Then I have to bring a little bit more of power. But normally, when I bring another flash, I will bring a Gikoro uh, GT200. Yeah. Or that's it. More than that, I never. I, I think I never use more power than that on a wedding. 
Amazing. No, it's really good to know. And it's, it's quite different again to sort of what we experience here in the UK. It's not unusual to have 12 o'clock ceremonies, although the most popular time is 2 p.m. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of British photographers would really freak out if the majority of the wedding was done after dark. But obviously, this is something that that you're used to doing with the later ceremony times as well. Yeah, the point the point here is that most of the weddings that I do are destination weddings and normally are on very hot cities like Cartagena mm. or Barranquilla that are coastal at, 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 at the side of the of the seas or you have 30 to 32 degrees uh, Celsius. I don't know in, on uh, how's the measure there, but 30 to 32 Celsius with a lot of humidity. So uh, I I really don't need more 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 uh, more power because everyone wants to go to the ceremony uh, ceremony later, so yeah. they don't they don't have so much hot on 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 that moment. Amazing! Um, yeah, thank you so so much for those images. They're absolutely stunning, um, and I'm so excited to go through the final five that we have as well. So what we'll do now is wrap it up for our YouTube channel. So I'd like to obviously again, thank you so, so much, Christian. For those watching so who haven't yet followed his Instagram, please do so. It's up there in the top right hand corner and we will leave it in the comments of the video. So thank you so, so much for doing that, Christian. And for anyone who's watching who wants to see the next five images, you can do that by joining the Flashmasters community at flashmasters.co. And as soon as you log in there, all of the videos, not just this one with Christian, but we currently have at this date over 40 hours of educational videos on off-camera flash and that grows every single month. So if you'd like to join us in the community, please do so at flashmasters.co. So until next time and we'll see you soon.